Welcome back, sewists. Got another fun summery dress as we're getting this summer wardrobe together. I'm going to be traveling soon and I'd really like to take this with me. So let me show you what today's project is. Simplicity 9780 is today's project. I showed this in my big pattern haul just a few weeks back. I'm going to be doing view A. I'm gonna put a little line drawing up here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, this pattern has, um, the one I'm choosing, has a little flounce sleeve similar to the one I'm wearing right here. So we're gonna have a little bit of a flounce sleeve. It does have sort of a closed neck with a drawstring. It's really a peasant style dress is how I consider this. Um, and it has a tears or a large ruffle at the bottom. Now when I measured on myself, the length was just a wee bit shorter than I like. I wanted just a couple more inches um, just so that I would feel comfortable in it wearing it, especially because I know I will belt it. And when you belt things, it kind of brings it in and up a little bit. It does have a self belt, which I might wear and I might not. I think I'll make it, however. Let me show you the fabric. I bought this fabric a year ago or at the end of the last season, and it is a dark navy, crinkly gauze with um, lemons on it. I have five yards. It has been pre-shrunk, so I surged the end of my fabric, ran it through the washer and the dryer, so it's ready to go. Has amazing weight. This is the kind of thing that will travel well, which is why I would like to get it made, because I'm leaving in just a couple days. So, let's head over to the cutting table now and I'll show you the few tiny little alterations that I made and talk a little bit about wearing ease. So this, because it is a big rectangles pretty much on the body until you belt it, um, there's a lot of fullness in this pattern. The nice thing about that is this is one of those patterns that just hangs from the shoulder and the neckline. So depending on your body, you can make you can change a lot inside that dress and it's still going to fit, which is why I chose to do an 18 in this pattern. So if you look at the bust line on this for the um, wearing ease or how big the finished garment is, the size 18 has a 62 bust line and a size 18's body would have a 40 bust line. So that is, that is 22 inches of wearing ease in that bust line. So if you think about that on a body, that's, you know, almost two feet of wearing ease that gets wrapped around you. So I, I felt very confident going down. Sometimes I go up in a pattern, mainly for my hip. But when I looked at this, um, because it's a box, even at 62, if it goes straight down and does not flare out at all, that's still going to go over my hip fine and I don't have any extra fullness. Plus it has the ruffle at the bottom. So I'm going straight 18. The one thing that I did change is, and I wish I hadn't done, one thing I did was I cut my belt pieces at 18 and I wish I would have left them longer. I always like a little bit longer um, sash. Um, for the um, bottom ruffle, because I had enough tissue on my pattern before I cut it out. Here's the little bottom ruffle. We're going to cut three of these on the fold. Okay, here's my ruffle. This is the original cut line. This is the two inches I've added to it to make it longer. Here is the actual dress piece. Cut line, the one inch I've added front and back, so they're the same. And that's the only alteration I've made to this pattern. So those are the pattern pieces. Everything's cut out and prepped and ready to go to start laying out. This pattern already has a pocket in it. We don't have to add a pocket. So happy about that. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is, the, this is the neck binding. This is the sash that I wish I had cut longer than I did. And I probably will go ahead and lengthen this because when you think about two of these wrapped around and tied, there's not a lot of tie left. I like to have a little longer tie. I just think it looks more attractive, especially if you do a bow or something like that. You need more length for it. So let's cut. So I'm looking at my pattern on my fabric and there's this large um, grouping of three lemons with three sort of palm looking leaves on it. This is directional. So I'm actually going to treat it like this is the top of my fabric for everything. I don't think I'm going to be flipping anything because I really don't want this piece upside down. So I'm going to just treat it 
as a directional fabric as I look at this. This definitely would not look the same if it were flipped over. If they had printed it both directions, I wouldn't worry about it, but it is always printed the same, this particular one, and it is the largest of the patterns, and it's always printed the same. So, top. Starting to lay out, and I just want you to see, this is 45 wide. When working on something like this, I lay out all my big pieces best I can, roll it up and continue to get everything big laid out to make sure that I do have enough fabric before I start cutting and realize I can't get the sleeve or one of the ruffles or something. So that's what I'm currently working on. I am gonna lengthen this tie just a little bit because I cut it off not thinking, I actually, right after I cut it off, I thought, oh dear, I shouldn't have done that. So, um, and the little neckties have to be cut on the bias. So you need kind of a biggish piece for that too. All right, I'm gonna put in here a real quick little clip of what just happened downstairs, just because I'll share with you something fun that I got. I'm up here working on this week's sewing project and the doorbell rang, I ran downstairs. Look what arrived. It's stunning. Look at how pretty this Delicate little roses, a huge hydrangea down in the middle. Thank you so much to my sweet, sweet Lauren for this lovely Mother's Day flowers. I'm gonna go find a beautiful spot to put it in the house. Uh, sleeve and my back yoke. We need one yoke on the fold for the back, two sleeves. The front yoke we're cutting two, and I think it's because it's got like a self, it's sort of a self-faced front yoke. I, because of my large design, I want to make sure that I like at least one of those two um, to be the very front of my yoke right here on the neckline. So I'm kind of looking where the pattern falls because it can end up where you just have like, it's mostly navy because of this design with like a tiny little lemon here and a tiny little lemon over here. So I'm looking at that when I'm doing this. Can't see the underneath side, but the underneath side actually, I'm pretty sure because how this lays, the middle of one of these is going to be the lemons. So I'm looking. Yep, right here's a big lemon. Okay, so I think I'm gonna line it up like this. And then once I get these lined, laid out, what's left is the little neck binding, my pockets. I need four pocket pieces or cut twice on the, on the double. And then I need three of these on the fold. So I'm looking at how much fabric I have, and I have lots. So I'm not worried anymore about not being able to get it up. I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning. I may check back in when I'm laying my little ties on the bias just so you can see how they look. I have a feeling I'll cut my pocket pieces around the bias of this because this long strip does eat a lot of fabric when cutting on the bias. I'm going to go ahead and cut out this section and then I'm going to come back and refold to do this last little bit. This type of crepey gauze is spongy. Do your best not to stretch and pull because you will end up shrinking your garment. So here's my front yoke that I just cut out. This is the reverse side, which was, I was kind of hoping. So this yoke piece then can have this nice big lemon right on the front. So that worked out really well. Okay, I've refolded my fabric. There's my ruffle. And I'm just going to go down one, two, three. What's left will become ties and pockets. So here's what's left of my fabric. Everything is cut out. So you can see I can get my two neckties nice and easy on the bias there. And I can get my four pocket pieces here and then I'm gonna have this scrap down here left over. Okay, we are ready to sew. And we're going to start with step one, which is our little yokes. They do not interface them. Sometimes they're interfaced, sometimes they're not. We're gonna transfer the markings. Um, on the front of our little yoke. So we've got two little circles at the top and then one at the bottom. It sort of looks like a dart. It's going to make that neck opening for us to be able to pull it over our heads. So we're gonna transfer those to one of the yokes. Now, after cutting this out, this is the yoke that I want to show. 
and I have transferred the markings to the other yoke, the one that I'm going to consider the wrong side. So I'm going to lay them on top of each other and we're going to just straight stitch on that little V that looks sort of like a dart. We're just going to straight stitch the two together, right sides together. This is step one. It doesn't really move on you as much as it's just sort of... Now I noticed something on this pattern. It has a little scan me tutorial. I'm not going to look at that real quick. Let me just see what they've got. They may have their own little tutorial. Let's look. What comes up? And it is, um, yeah. They aren't specific to the pattern, but it does have some um, little tutorials like how to, how to sew a catch stitch, how to sew two rows together. So some very, um, some of your basic things you need to know to do most of their patterns, that's what comes up. So if you um, scan the little scan on the corrections down here and this little scan, what you will get are some general sewing um, instructions. It does not appear that it's anything specific to the pattern, however. Good to know though. That's, that's interesting that they're, they've added that. Thing where you want to sew this at a pretty small stitch. Sometimes we, you know, we, I sew with like a three and sort of like my everyday um, stitch, but when you're sewing something like this little yoke opening that's going to get cut and flipped and will take some um, tension and some pull, I usually go to a little bit smaller stitch just so that it holds everything together, especially if you have a fabric that frays. I have my machine set for needle down, so it always stops with the needle in, but I can change that later if I need to. All right, so, oops, there's our little V. Once we've sewn our little V, we're just going to cut down the middle, flip it around, press it, do the little understitching. So let me find my scissors. All right, so I'm going to cut between the legs of my little thing that I just sewed to open it up. And you want to get close to your stitching. You want to make sure the bottom of that V isn't too close together. So if you have it really close, it's very hard to cut down at the point. If it's a little wider, you can even shape it a little bit. It makes it easier to get down to the point. And you'll notice their drawing, the V is slightly curvy, and that's so that it's open down there to get in there and turn it. So I'm just cutting straight through, getting close to my little point down here. Make sure that you have transferred all your little notches and things too, because they are going to be pretty important. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can flip this around. So now we have a faced little opening and it opens up. I'm gonna go press this and then we're gonna do the little under stitching. So that is, we're doing steps one, two, and three on our little directions. So here's a little close-up of how it looks once we've turned and pressed it. This is my front side. This is the back side. So the back, um, you can see why I chose the side I did. This would just look a little less adorable at the front, or this, I really like how that looks for the front. So now we're going to understitch it to get to what we need. This is the right side, so the stitching isn't going to show. You could totally top stitch this. That would be fine also. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this. Let's flip it to the wrong side, or the inside and then we're going to pull away the front so that our seam allowance and our lined side are what we sh are what shows so you can actually see this seam allowance shadowing through right there we're going to stitch through that seam allowance it is what they're showing right here 
So this is when we sewed it, then we flipped it, and then they're just edge stitching right up here. You don't even have to get to the point. It's just to hold everything down, and it keeps that line side from peeking through. So that's what we're going to do. So here's my seam allowance, pushing it towards the lining side. This is where it's stitched together. And I'm just going to come in, get my threads all back and under the foot. I'm going to lengthen my stitch a little bit for this. I'm not going to worry about stitching um, all the way to the point. We just want to get part of this seam allowance. So even if you just do halfway, I'm going to feel to make sure everything's where it belongs. And I've got my seam line lined up with the inside of my foot right there. We're going to just take a few stitches. And the main thing is you want to be catching that seam allowance while you're going. And pretty soon you don't have enough seam allowance to stitch, and that's where it's a good place to backstitch. And we have this very delicate little line right here, and we're going to do that for both sides. That's the understitching. So now I'm going to come over to this other side, do the same thing. So from the right side of the garment, you see nothing, and from the wrong side, there's a little tiny bit of um, top stitching or edge stitching there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Make sure you've got your seam allowance um, pushed to the back side. So when we're done, this is the wrong side, and here's our little bit of stitching, and here's our right side. You can't see any stitching, but it's going to keep that from rolling to the front. So now that we've done all of that, we're ready to start gathering our. Um, we're going to start gathering our little skirt portions or our bodice portions. Um, to attach to the yokes. It would be a good idea, and they mentioned um, sort of basting these edges together, and I am going to go ahead and do that. Even if you put in a few hand tacks to keep it, it's just going to make your life a lot easier to put those together. To baste these together, I've just lengthened my stitch. I'm not worrying about sewing right on the 5 8 inch line. I'm really just keeping my layers together. And we're just going to base them together so they don't come apart. So I'm going to do these two outer edges. And then if I need to, I'll go ahead and do another edge. But I'm really just going to do the, You can see how they keep separating. Doing these outer edges may be all I need. All right, we've got our little front yoke all put together. We're ready to go on to step four, which is gathering the upper edge of our front. So here's my front. And I'm going to gather, I'm going to do two gathering lines. So set my machine to a four. I'm going to do one at a quarter of an inch and one at five eighths of an inch. Since I already have my machine set up, I'm going to do the front and the back. I'm going to get them both done. And because they're so similar, I'm going to take a clip and I'm going to clip the one that's the front. I'm just going to put a clip on him to hang out like like that. There's a little clip there. And then I'll remember, it'll be easy for me to know that's the front and we're ready to go. Don't backstitch when doing gathering lines and you want to do it continuous. So each, each row will be continuous you, um, on something like this. If it's too long, you don't want to do it to continuous, but this isn't that long. So the continuous line is fine. I did transfer my notches for lining up and I did mark my center front also before doing this. It's always good to have those lines in first because they will move once you start pulling your gathering lines. Okay, so that's my quarter inch line. Now I'm going to come back and do it again at five eighths. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the back while I'm here. And then we will come back and we will pin both yokes on and sew them on. So I'll see you back here in a minute after all this gathering. Right, so I have got my basting lines all in, and now I'm matching up my notches and pinning on my yoke. So this is the front, and I've matched up my center front and put a pin in it. I've matched up the notch and put a pin in it. So you can see the fullness here that we will be gathering in. When you start to gather, 
Remember, you don't want or need gathers in your 5 8 inch seam allowance. So you want the gather to start at the 5 8 and go this way. This little area right here should be flat. That's where we're going to be stitching. We don't want gathers where we're stitching. So, I mean, you know, inside that stitching line. We want them here along the yoke. So here's the front. I've also got my back ready to go. So now I can start pulling my gathering lines. These are right sides together, so I'm going to get grab my two gathering lines and I always gather the bobbin side or the back side that's the side we can see can take those two lines and I usually pull these together this is the right side thread that got pulled through I'm gonna pull it back to the other side so it quits interfering with me giving me some problems there we go now on this side I just have my two threads and I can start gathering and you want to always pull the same thread so I'm always pulling the bobbin threads and we're going to start moving our fabric so that we can get our pretty soft gathers and this just looks so good gathered this fabric in particular is excellent for this application we're just going to move them around until we get and I'm going to keep moving because I want to get this I'm going to kind of go from both directions towards the center and then I will start evening it out so that we get our gathers perfect between our pins. So we're gonna do this for both pieces and then we'll be ready to top stitch or to straight stitch right on our 5 8 inch line. Then we'll come back and seam finish. For now, I'm gonna get both of them gathered and ready so I can then just sew both of them. Here's how it looks when it's gathered and everything neat. Just doing my best to make them nice and even so that we can start sewing them in. And this is the back. We have the same thing done to the front. So we've got our gathers nice and even, and I've got a flat space on each end where our seam allowance is. So we're doing steps four and five, which is our, we're applying the dress or the bodice to the yoke for um, front and back. I have my back under the sewing machine already, and here is my front. I've evened out my gathers, nice and pretty. Here's the yoke side, so when it's sewn, going to have I'm really going to like this. I'm just going to sew straight down my 5 8 inch line, just straight stitch it together. Once that's stitched, I'm going to slide over here and I'm just going to serge that seam allowance. Now you can serge it at the 5 8 or you can serge off the excess. I think I'm going to leave all my seam allowance there. I'm not going to take off any um, for the yoke area. Do back stitch now and don't forget we were just basting, so don't forget to put your machine back to a regular stitch. Chime in, what are you guys listening to while you're sewing? I would love to know, what are you guys listening to? Just finished the most recent Myrtle Clover. I didn't listen to it, I read it in an afternoon. So fun. The biggest concern when you're doing this is you don't want to get pleats where your gathers are. You want them to look like gathers. You don't want to have any fold overs. So if you did your lower basting line on the 5 8 inch line then you want to stitch on that 5 8 inch line and you won't get any fold overs. You can see I'm stitching right on my gathering line and because of that I won't get any little pleats or fold overs and I'm able to keep it nice and straight. Watch that my Gathers are going where they belong. Make sure I don't have any creep here. So that we have nice. Does that lay nice? Yeah, that's going to be really pretty. So I'm going to get the other one done and then I'll come over here and serge them both at the same time. Let's get the front on. All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna remove all these pins. I'm gonna head over here to my overlock and I'm just going to serge this raw edge so that I don't have any um, fraying, don't have any raw edges, and we will be ready to move on to pockets. So 
So we have a front and a back. So we've done um, up through five. We're ready to do six. Six is sewing on the pocket. Let me get out, grab my pockets. And I have marked my pockets on the pattern, or on the shirt, on the side seams. Now I'm gonna mark my little pocket. I marked the circles. They have a notch there that I think is for lining up your side seams, but they have circles for lining up the pockets, so that's what I've marked so I can get my pockets on. They are doing the traditional pocket method where you clip your side seam. Well, there's lots of reasons for this. It lays nice, etc. However, because you just are clipping into that side seam, where you put your hand in your pocket and move it, there's no seam finish, and it really weakens that little spot where it's clipped, and the likelihood of it fraying through and you having a hole right by your side seam is high. You are likely to end up with a hole there, and I just never do this method. It's extremely accepted, and you'll see it in almost every pattern. It's very common. I do not like it. You're likely to, I, I use my pockets. If you don't use, if you're putting in a pocket that you never use, it won't matter. But if you actually use your pockets, you're gonna have a hole there in no time if your fabric frays. Or if you have a lightweight fabric like a knit or something, it'll pull through even though the fabric doesn't fray. So I don't do that. Step nine, you will see the little clippy clips. I don't do the little clippy clips. Okay, so in the pockets, they sew the pocket on, they understitch the pocket, etc., and then they clip this side seam so the pocket, it's the back one so it can flip to the front so it lays nice. This is what I don't do. I just don't do that. Um, that's where it's going to fray and you're going to have issues. So this little step right here where they clip it, no, no, no for me. So I've got my pockets marked. Sit here and cotch tape for a minute. I um, would like to mention that your pocket, you've got sort of, a, not quite a tear drape, tear sh drop shaped pocket, sort of, but not quite. The pointy or the narrow end is the top, the full end is the is the bag of the pocket, just so you don't get your pockets upside down. It will not be seen finished in this little corner. Okay, this is what always gets me, because I don't want to do the clippy do. I often just seam finish my whole pockets and then I'm done, which is now what I really think I want to do. Hmm. Because if I do that, then I can do this whole straight stitch thing around. Okay, that's what I think I want to do. Okay, after some cogitation, all right, let's work on our pockets. Um, I gave you the whole spiel about how I don't do it the way they do it. What I am doing is going to my serger and I'm searching around the searching around the curvy part of the pocket. I'm not doing the straight part. I'm going to get it with the side seam in a minute. Then I'm pinning them on according to their markings and I'm just going to stitch the pocket down. Now you can just stitch the whole thing at 5 8 I'm actually going to come in and stitch at 5 8 between my markings and then I'm going to serge this outer edge together. You can do it, you could sew straight 5 8 from end to end if you want to. Either way really works. But that's it. So we're going to do that for both pockets, front and back, right sides together. Make sure you don't get your pockets on upside down. And once we get the pockets on, then we can do our side seams and move on to ruffle. All right, so we're just gonna stitch on some pockets. All right, I just downloaded Donna Andrews' You've Got Murder. It's a new series. One of the characters is an AI, I believe. So hmm, we'll see. I, it's, it's read by um, the same person who reads the other series, so very good narrator. I'll, I'll update as we go. I just downloaded it. I'm two minutes in. <laughs> okay, now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and go to the serger, and I'm going to serge down this entire seam, just seam finish. I'm not taking anything off, and I'm going to do that front and back. Side seams will be fixed finished. I have a seam finished side seam and you can see the pocket hanging down right here. So I'm going to do that on all of the pieces and then and then we will be ready to sew the side seams together at the sewing machine and around the pocket and do all of that stuff. All right so this is how our pockets currently look. They're stitched on and I've surged that entire 
edge did not take anything off so this is the pocket currently and if you're looking at our directions it's this and then I've gone ahead and seam finished that whole seam we're now going to come in and do this under stitching right here head over to the ironing board press it and then stitch it and that's just going to keep our pockets from um, popping out all right we are just pressing the pocket out so the seam allowance is underneath the pocket side and we're just going to top stitch I'm only top stitching between my markings so I'm top stitching from here you can see this is the bottom of the pocket I'm not top stitching down there I'm only going from here to about here and that's to keep the pocket in place I have one done so I can show you this one has been stitched this will be on the inside of the pocket and it's going to keep the pocket from peeking out when we're wearing it so it makes the side seam look nice and seamless like there isn't a pocket hiding in there and when I edge stitch I get pretty close it's about an eighth of an inch We're ready to do our side seam. I've pinned it together, including the pocket, and we're going to just sew five eighths of an inch. I'm going to come down till I see where my old pocket, where my pocket marking was, and then I'm going to come around. Then I'm going to come around. Here's the bottom, and the pocket's all the way up here. So we're going to sew five eighths of an inch, and then I'm going to come up from the bottom and do my five eighths inch straight up to here, so that I have. Um, my bag of my pockets deep enough that I don't have like stuff falling out the bottom of the pocket. So we're going to start here. I'm going to go all the way to here and then around to the bottom of my pocket, stop, and then I'm going to start at the bottom of the hem and come straight up to the bottom of my pocket. So I have a little dress started. The side seams are done. Here's our little pocket. And from the right side, okay, so here's my front. My little neck opening. Here's the side seam. And the pocket just disappears in there. It just needs a good pressing. And here's our pocket. Ready to go. So we're now going to go to sleeve. Now I'm doing the version that just has the little sleeve like this. No extra ruffle. Nothing else. So I'm taking my little sleeve piece, which I just put away, and we're going to do a tiny narrow hem in the bottom. Make sure you mark your front from your back. They are different and it's going to fit differently. So the back is a little bit longer um, back here. That seems a little longer where it attaches to the yoke than the front. So we're going to do our little hem, um, folded twice hem and top stitched, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to press it um, and top stitch in a little tiny narrow hem and then we'll be ready to... Okay, we're going to work on the hem for the bottom. There's the back of the sleeve, there's the front of the sleeve. And I've already folded up and pressed. This presses so beautifully. A quarter of an inch, I'm gonna fold one more time and press it. And then we're going to stitch it down. Simple as that. So I'm gonna do both sleeves, get them both pressed and ready to go, and then I can stitch them both. I've got a little bit of steam going in my iron. And just give us a nice little hem. And if you struggle, depends on the fabric you're working with, it may be easier for you to do fold up the first layer, stitch it, and then come back and press in the second layer. That's certainly acceptable. You'll only see the double stitching on the inside. The outside will only show one, low, one layer of stitching. Let's go sew it up. This calls for, when we get down to it, it's step 17. It says pin tape to armhole edge. It requires bias for the underarm. You can just buy a package of bias tape. It's included in the notions. However, if you would like it to be all made of the same fabric, you can create your own bias. We've already made bias pieces for our little neckties. So let me show you real quick how you make your own bias if you wanna make some to go in the underarm and it matches. And we'll get back to sleeve. Okay, we're gonna make our own little binding, underarm binding, it needs some bias tape. Um, I don't have any navy. I only have black, so I thought I'm just going to make my own out of the scrap from where I just made the bias for the neckline. So the first thing I did was just true it up, make it nice and straight. Then I'm going to come down, I'm going to make it one inch, so I'm going to set my ruler like this so I have one inch to work with. 
to bias bind it, which should be more than enough. You can also make it about an inch and a quarter, whatever um, makes it easiest for you to work. Most of your quarter inch when it's down started out as one inch bias or one and an eighth. Sometimes it's a little scant over. So I'm going to cut this edge and I'll have my own bias made. Okay, so here's a nice piece of matching bias. I have two of them here because I cut it folded and we're ready to go apply it to our arm, our underarm. All right, so here's my cute little sleeve hem all in and ready to go. And now I am pinning it right sides together inside so it matches up perfectly with the yoke. If you get your hem right, the, um, the yoke depth and the sleeve depth are right on. So can you see where my sleeve ends? Right where the yoke ends. Perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and just sew this little section of both sleeves. It is 16. And it shows this down here and you can sew that if you want to, but there's nothing to sew together here. Um, it looks like there is but because of how they've drawn it, but actually the sleeve ends here, and then down here it's just the dress. We're going to come back to that, though, and add our bias in a minute. I'm sewing my sleeve. Make sure your seam allowance is pressed up towards the yoke when you're stitching it, and I am stitching right off of the sleeve. And I'm coming onto the shirt underarm, and I'm going to go ahead and stitch it. Even though there's nothing to stitch to, I'm just sort of making a stabilization line right at 5 8 And I'm stitching with my seam allowance open at the side seam, and that's going to make it easier when it comes time to do my um, bias binding in the underarm. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch all the way around. All right, so here's my little sleeve sewn in. And I'm now going to come over to my overlock and I'm going to serge this section, not the underarm, but just the sleeve up. I'm going to give this a nice little serge on all, this, all four corners and then we'll be ready to apply our bias. In the directions, what we're doing is I'm serging this section right here and then we're going to come back. You can see where they add the bias to the bottom part of that, so that's what we're going to do next. And they actually show clipping it apart, and I don't feel so bad about doing that if it's all overlocked and it keeps it from fraying before we add our bias on. Okay, there's quite a few ways you can do this bias binding. They are doing where they are, it's they've like unfolded one edge of the bias, stitching along that unfolded edge, and then you're going to trim out all of this inside here, flip it around to the other side, and top stitch it down. That's what they're showing. What I've done instead, as I folded my bias in half, and I've pinned it right along my line where I stitch, so I'm going to stitch it like an eighth of an inch. Trim all of this out, and then flip the whole thing around and press it, and then stitch again along this outer edge. So let me get this first row in, stitched and trimmed, so I can show you how we're going to flip it around um, to finish off this little armhole. All right, so here's my little armhole, and here's my bias that I've got folded over. And you can see I've stitched it on. Here's my original little basting line that I did that I'm going to pull out in a minute, just making it nice and stable. I made sure and started up into the sleeve. Here's my sleeve, and I've folded in my ends so I don't have any raw ends on my bias. And I'm going to come down right below the sleeve, and I'm going to start trimming away some of this excess. We want it to be narrower down here than our bias because once we get this trimmed away, we're going to fold all of this to the inside. It's going to cover that raw edge. I'm going to give it a good press and then we're going to top stitch that down. This is the inside will be all top stitched and on the outside, this is bias or this is a basting. So I'm going to pull these out, the stitching out and on this side, you'll only see the top stitch for this little piece of bias here. So it'll start right up here at the yoke. There'll be a little piece of stitching right here, and it'll just baste all of that, or it'll, uh, bias will include and cover all of those raw edges all the way around. Okay, so I have one sleeve sewn with the bias. So here's, here's the bias side see it's enclosed nicely and it comes up into the little sleeve up by the yoke so from the outside you just have this top stitching 
and it ends nicely and it looks all um, self-enclosed and pretty and finished, which is all that we care about really. Okay, I'm going to do the other side and then we're going to move on to up oh, neck binding. Now that we've finished the sleeve and the little underarm bias, we're going to move on to adding our little neck um, binding and ties. And before we can do that, we have to do gathering lines around the entire top of our um, dress, which is really the neckline, but it's currently wide and big because we're going to gather it onto our ties. So it has half inch seam allowance around the neckline. So I did one line at quarter and one line at half for our gather lines. And I just went from one neckline opening all the way around to the other neckline opening. Then we're gonna take our tie piece. We have two of them. I think it's pattern piece number four. There's lots of little markings and those markings line up with all of our seam lines so that we get, um, we know how much to gather in. So you'll make sure and transfer those to your little ties. Sew them up in the center back. And then what they do, what they've chosen to do is they're turning up the edge that you're not going to be sewing to the neckline. They're turning down um, a quarter of an inch. And then the other edge, which is the edge that I got all my markings on, is the one that's gonna get pinned to the neckline. We're gonna start at our center back. So I've marked my center back on my garment. They are pinning, instead of pinning right sides together, they're pinning right side of tie to wrong side of garment. Here he is. And then we're gonna find my center back pin, or my center back seam. That's where we sewed our two ties together. So we're gonna put that seam on my center back and pin that. Now this is not the side we folded up. This is the side that's not folded up. The next pin will be at the next seam. So it'll be where our sleeve and our yoke meet. That's where the next pin goes or the next marking. So you can see all of this here is going to get gathered in. Then the next pin will be the other side of that sleeve. So we've got a lot of sleeve to gather in. And then the last marking or pin for me will be at the center front where our opening is. So I'll put that pin there so you can kind of see now I've got half of it pinned in and can you see all of that's going to get gathered in. So the, the most of the gathers of the sleeve a little less on the yoke pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of my pins on my spots. This is why it's really important to transfer those markings. I'm ready to pull my gather lines and then we will stitch this around at half an inch then we will fold in our bias around the neckline. We're at, it's, we're doing the step 24 on. So step 24 is prepping our ties. Step 25 is running the gathering lines and pinning on the ties. So that's where we're at. Here is my neckline gathers. Here's my binding. So you can see they're open together. Everything's ready to go. Here's my front. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch this all the way around which is number 24 here. Once I've done that, then we're going to sew our ties and then flip around and finish off this neckline. I have folded my um, ties on each end towards each other. So here is my neck opening. I'm gonna sew. It is this little section right here. So we're gonna sew these ends and then we can pull them through right here Oops, we can pull them through right here where it's attached so that each end of the tie will be finished and then we'll come back and finish the middle part. Then all that's left is this ruffle, which is the easiest part. We're gonna get this neckline finished before I think about that. So here's my tie. It's a little thicker than I would like, honestly, and I'm, um, I don't know if I wanna pull it back out to thin it up. It's kind of just bulky, but it's also, matches the size of the neck binding. So th this is the right side. The neck binding comes over. You can see how I'm pinning it. So once we get our ties made on each end, we're gonna pull the neck binding over and then we're gonna stitch this down. Now you can hand whip stitch this. You can mis machine stitch it. You, you do it how you please. I'm going to mach machine stitch this across. And once I've done that, 
because this is pretty straightforward and easy. I'm going to go ahead and put together my ruffle. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all three layers together. I'm just going to serge them together. I'm going to hem the whole thing and I'm going to put my gathering lines in. I'm going to gather each panel separately even though they're sewn together because it's easier to control it so that we can then attach it. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, so it's got to be hemmed on both ends before we do our gathering because it is a, it's a top stitched on. So I'm also going to, all these things are getting ready to happen. I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna serge my hem on this because this is going to get applied and I'm going to go ahead and serge my ruffle together and hem it on both ends and meet you back here. So if you were making the little number C, letter, if you were making letter C, we're pretty much there. We have a cute little dress. I have searched the bottom of this because all that's left now is the final ruffle and it's applied to the top. Back here, I have sewn my three ruffle pieces together. I just searched them together, pressed everything. I'm now pressing up the hem at the bottom to do the little small rolled hem, which they are showing in step um, 20, in 29, they're showing the ruffle put together, which is what we're doing. I'm now pressing up my narrow hem for the bottom. I'm going to stitch it in. Then the top, I have surged the top edge. I'm going to press it down also, put my gathering lines over it so that I can apply the ruffles. That's really, the ruffles very easy. And we've actually done this style of ruffle before on a couple of other dresses. The sash also very straightforward. So I'm going to um, meet you back here after I'm through hemming and I've got my ruffle ready to sew on. I'm going to get my gathering lines. When you go to gather the ruffle, instead of doing one gathering line around that huge circle, put gathering lines on each panel so that you're gathering panel to panel to panel. It's going to be a lot easier to um, apply it. We have our little dress already done. It sort of looks like view C um, currently. It kind of looks like a little nighty, a little shift. I really like it. I would wear it just like this actually. Super cute. However, I have created, I have uh, put together the ruffles. So I have three ruffle panels searched together. On the top, I folded down um, a, an inch. It's about an inch. So I folded down an inch, and then I've done a gathering line all the way around it. And then on the bottom, I've done a little narrow hem. So I now have a big old ruffle to add to my dress. So we're going to quarter the dress. I'm going to start, uh, we have our two side seams, and if you put the side seams on top of each other and pull, so here's my side seams on top of each other, so this will be a center front or center back, I'm going to put a pin in it and see which one this is. This is the center front, so my blue bird is the center front, and back here my orange bird will be my center back. So now I have my, uh, my dress quartered. I'm going to do the same thing with my ruffle. So with the ruffle, we're going to take one of the ruffle pieces and we're going to put our seams on top of each other and pull. And this right here, my red bird, that's going to be my center front because there's no seam. And then if I let this, if I keep pulling to the back, I'm going to end up with a seam where the center back is. So now I have the center back, that's my seam. I am going to put a, let me see what color did I say my back of my dress was. It's orange bird. I'm going to put an orange bird on this too so I can match my birds to each other. And so this little red bird is going to become blue. Got a color code system. So now that I've done that, I can take my front to my back. I'm going to put my two birds on top of each other on the ruffle, so my front to my back on my ruffle, and then I'm going to pull to each side, and these will be my side seams. So this is going to go to my side seams. So I'm going to put some red on those side seams, red birds. And now I'm ready to lay this on top of my dress. So we're going to now take the dress piece. So now I'm going to take my dress. Boop, boop, boop. I'm going to lay it so I can see my center front. Here's my little blue bird. And now I'm going to find my little blue bird on here. And I'm going to, this lays on top of each other. So you're not doing right sides together. I'm going to lay one on top of the other and 
put a pin in it. They overlap at about 5 eighths of an inch. And that's the first one. Then I'm going to take, come to my side seam on my dress. I'm going to find my, one of my red birds here. So I can work my way around and I'm going to lay that on top of each other. So now my ruffle at the side will lay on top of my side seam. And now I'm ready to work my way around to the back. Find my center back of my ruffle. Put it on the back of my dress at my little bird marking, my where I've quartered, pin that down. And I'm overlapping about 5 eighths of an inch. So you can see how much is going to get gathered on. All of this has to get gathered up. So I have one more to pin in my side seam here. Here's the side seam, and here's my birdie for the side seam. So now my I've got this quartered and pinned on. I'm now ready to start pulling my gathering lines. Now I have said many times that I always pull from the bobbin. Well, I sew this like I always do so I can pull the bobbin, but actually we have to pull from the top because this is applied from the top. So I'm going to be pulling the top thread this time instead of the bobbin thread, which is not typical for me, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go all the way around to my center back because right there, I have a seam where my ruffle comes together and I have my threads very visible so I can start pulling a thread and I'm going to pull from um, panel to panel. Now because I have so much to gather, so if I hold this up, all of this has to gather on. We can uh, now once again um, piece this out between so I'm going to divide this in half and I'm going to divide the dress in half and I'm going to put that on top of it. And all that does is it helps keep the fullness even and gathered so that I don't end up um, getting my, my ruffle, um, all the gathers in one spot or something. So now, instead of having all of, all of that to gather in, I've divided it out again, so I'm going to have smaller little areas to gather up. So I'm going to, I'm going, I went from quartering, now I'm eighthing it. I'm going in and adding a, a one more um, spacing between that to get it nice and even. I'm going to pull my gathering lines, stitch it on, and it's done. So that's what I'm going to be spending some time on now is just getting this all uh, measured out and even. I'm doing one more row. This time I don't, um, I, now that I have it on there, I don't have to do a color coding for my pins anymore. And the only reason I did that is because I wanted to make sure that I got the front of the ruffle where there is no seam on the front of the dress. I don't want a seam right down the center front. I want to put that seam in the center back. So that was why I was being so careful about my color coding in the beginning was just for that. So I'm going to keep doing this and then I'll pull my gathers. I have not made the sash yet, so the sash is going to get done. I think the sash is so straightforward. I'm not going to really say much about it. I'm just going to put it together, and um, I'll show you again when I'm ready to sew the ruffle on just so you can see how it looks going on. Then we'll be ready to finally try it on and see how it looks. I may need to go down. I think I'm probably going to end up wearing it with one of my elastic belts and not the sash, but you never know. I'll, I'll show it to you both ways. All right, let's get our ruffle on and get this dress on. It's late, it's gonna be supper time. Yeah, it's 5.30. I've been sewing all day up here and doing other stuff, but I've been sewing mostly. Let's get this thing done. Okay, after lots of fiddling around, I have a big ruffle pinned all the way around. I'm going to now just top stitch it on, give everything a haircut and a press, and we will try it on.
pleased with this. I do not have the sash made, and honestly, I don't know if I'd wear it with a sash. It's a lot longer than I thought it would be. Oh, I'm, I'm pleased. Okay, this is grand. All right, I am gonna go get one of my elastic belts and I'll be back and we'll try it on. See you in a minute. Okay, here's the dress. You can see I lengthened it. Remember, I added some inches to it um, to make it nice and long. I really like this length. This kind of looks traditional Moo if you look up a, a real Moo It looks a little like this. This is giving me some Moo vibes, but I've got a couple belts to try on with it. This is the sash. It comes with it. Uh, I always belt my dresses because it's more flattering for my figure. Okay, one thing I like about the, the self belt is it kind of disappears. So there's the self belt. See how nice and full it is? I love the pocket. Super cute. Okay, that's self belt. Get up close so you can see the neckline. I just have it tied. The one thing I don't like as much is just how big the ties are. They're kind of thick, but they look like that on the picture too. Lays very nice. Okay, I have an elastic belt somewhere. Let me find it. And there's the elastic belt, which is probably how I would wear it. I just feel like it's comfier and easier to wear. Um, it's not, it's a little, the navy's just a little bit darker, but not bad. Okay. Super cute dress. Did take, this is a longer so mainly, there's just lots of little fiddly bits, lots of gathering, things like that that take time. It's not, um, I would say, a difficult sew at all, but there are, just takes a little time. It would be cute with the other sleeve too, but for this, for a summery, gauzy, easy to wear dress, and with this fabric, easy to pack and wear, um, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be packing tomorrow. So this is definitely going to go with me. Great travel dress. I'll see you next week for another fun video.